Welcome to From Scratch Ranch. If you're new to this channel, well, we're a family in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas building this ranch from scratch, starting with this barn dominium. My wife, Kristen, my daughter, Michaela, and I have tried to build as much of this interior of this barn dominium ourselves, and it's turning out great. If you've been following us for a while now, well, thanks for watching. And you probably watched us build these two loft spaces, Michaela's loft on that side and the master loft on this side, and it's just open down below. You probably were wondering, well, how are they gonna get up there? And I installed these spiral staircases. These are the DIY kit from Paragon Stairs, and they're great, love them. You also are probably wondering, well, what about privacy? There is no privacy at all. It's just open. You also are probably wondering about safety. I did put a temporary railing up on Michaela's side over there out of two by fours, but our side, yep, nothing. It's just a drop off and it could be dangerous, yes. So that leads us to today's project. We're gonna build a pony wall. Yep, I'm putting in two half walls, pony walls, appropriately named for a horse ranch, hobby farm, homestead. And I'm gonna build them out in a modular way. So in sections, I need to be able to take out a section and move furniture up and down. Because of the spiral staircases, that's the only way I'll be able to do that. And on the living space side, I'm gonna trim it out to look like a four board Kentucky horse fence. So it's gonna look really, really cool. So with that, let's get started. All right, the first thing I need to do is cut my posts. I'm gonna put four posts up between the wall and the staircase. And I'm gonna do two small sections, one on each end, and in the middle will be a larger, wider section. It'll all be drywalled, but that middle section, the wider section, is what I'm gonna make removable. So that way I can get furniture up and down. So let's go cut some posts. So I decided to go with four by six inch lumber for my posts. And the reason I did that is I wanna be able to set the post on the subfloor itself and then overhang it down the front side of that joist and lag bolt it in. So it's got support both vertically and horizontally. So that notch will be 10 and a half inches for the two by 10 joist and subfloor by three and a half inches, uh, which will give me the two inches to lag bolt through into the side and then also three and a half inches for the overhang on the subfloor and then also that's the same width as a two by four so my two by four wall in between will be perfect to fit in between the posts and these posts i also looked for the the gnarliest naughtiest with the most live edge as possible this one's a perfect example i got a great live edge here uh, because this is a barn it's a barn dominium and i want this to be rustic we're going to stain these and varnish them um, and i want the most rustic looking pieces of wood i can find at my local big box store so this is a, a great one here. Um, and then I also have reclaimed two by six material from a friend's pergola when they tore down their deck and, and rebuilt that. I took all the two by six material that was really good still and I'm gonna use that to put it up against the wall. And I'm gonna do a 42 inch pony wall plus the 10 and a half inches of the lower joist plus the subfloor there. So. 42 plus 10 and a half, so 52 and a half is what I need to cut. So now I've got my 52 and a half inch post and I need to cut my notch out. So I wanted my notch to be 10 and a half inches high, and then three and a half inches deep. For my three and a half inch or two, you know, my two by four wall that will fit in there, which is a three and a half inch width. So 10 and a half by three and a half, and we'll cut that notch out. I'm gonna use the, the uh, miter saw to do this. I do have a table saw over here, but it's, uh, I think it's just as easy to 
use my miter saw to do it. And I'll just get in as close as I can this way, get in as close as I can this way, and then I'll use my hand saw to finish out the corner. I just cut some, some spacers five and a half inches uh, deep to keep the wood from uh, going too deep because I can kind of come down on this and the blade will only, you know, it won't go too deep into uh, the part that I want to keep. All right, see, I slipped a little bit and it went a little too far, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna carefully cut this one by hand. Or just... I'm gonna have to just hold this one as steady as possible. Okay, so that got me close, but I'm still, well, you can see on the bottom side here, I'm still gonna have to use a handsaw to finish this out. And just clean up the inside corner. I want this to be as smooth as possible not all chunky, because I want this to sit flush against that joist in that floor. All right, now, just a small detail. I'm gonna cut this at an angle, because this is gonna sit up, you know, onto the floor here and the joist here, and I want an angle cut here, just to kind of give it a more finished look. And I'm just gonna use the 50 degree, which is as much as I can go. Oh, and I need to measure that because the trim board on the bottom, which you'll see later, is three quarter inch thickness. So I need to be at least three quarter exposed there. And then I'll take this angle like this. Okay, let's go check for fit. And then if everything is good, we'll use this piece as my template. Okay, so I'm at the top of the stairs, uh, but this end piece, I'm gonna do a small one here. So I'll put a post here, a little mini wall between here before I do that section over there. So I've got this that I'm gonna anchor into the wall and I'll stain it to be the same color. So that fits nice. Let's come down the stairs a bit. And you can see that, yeah. And that'll be nice and flush on the bottom. I'm gonna put, trim this out on the bottom. It'll be trimmed out across here. That'll look nice, nice and rustic. All right, so now I'm gonna use this piece as my template. And I wanna keep this part showing on the outside, this live edge here, because that's really cool looking. Uh, so I'm gonna put this on this side here like this because this is the, the side that will be exposed down to the family room there. So for my length, mark that. And then my notch. And then my angle. And that'll leave this part showing. Okay, so this is the part I wanna keep. So I just need to make sure my blade is on the left side of that line there. I'm using this chicken wire over here because I need to set this out with my spacers and it takes it off the, the arms there. This is just a little bit more difficult to work with because it is so heavy. Okay, now this time I wanna be on the inside of the line because I wanna notch this out. I'm gonna be all the way forward. 
that's the thing about this saw. I don't want to do this because then I'll cut it all the way in half. I want to be all the way forward using these spacers to, to keep the wood pushed up against the, the back there. A little more freehand. Uh, like this long cut will be a total freehand long cut. I guess this takes a little bit of coordination. Hopefully I can keep that straight. see on the back side because of the curvature of the circular blade now I just got to manually cut that out If I did it right, I've got a four by four post now, cut out of this four by six. And it looks like a four by four. All right, now what I wanna do is pre-drill two holes for my two lag bolts that are gonna go in. So I wanna space those right because I'll have them across all the posts. So I want them to be the exact same uh, position so it looks good from down below. So this is the size lag bolt I'm going with. It's a six inch lag bolt, half inch. So it's half inch wide by six inches long. And what that's gonna do is give me the two inches. And then I've got another three inches for the, I've got two two by tens that are sandwiched together on the end of those loft spaces. So this will be a good size. I probably could have gone with a five inch, uh, but this is fine, the six inch. So now I just got to drill a pilot hole. Um, the bit is smaller than the actual lag bolt. Yep, that should do it. Okay, let's go check this one for fit. Okay, this is my dry fit. <clears throat> And I'm gonna put this one in the most prominent position here, next to the staircase, visible from down below, uh, because of this live edge. This is my best one I think I got. And that looks to be a really good fit there. Okay, so this first piece I've got is a two by six, and I'm just gonna screw this right to that post there. Let's make sure it's plumb first. I need to build 37 inches to fit in between here. So we're gonna go build a 37 by 42, a 37 by 42 inch two by four wall to fit in there. I didn't bolt these 
posts in just yet because I want to get all my wall sections built first because I want to make sure I'm as tight as possible um, and it plumb and everything. So I'm going to build all my walls first, place them all, kind of squeeze it all together and then bolt my posts in and then finish off the drywall, slide the, the walls back in. Good. That is on there solid. last a little bit. It needs to go manual. The drill won't handle it. Okay. I think that's good. That's pretty tight. All right. So there's two joists that this is going through. These are two by tens and they're stacked together. Um, this outer joist here. Um, if you didn't see that video link above, it's uh, building my loft bedroom. Uh, Michaela did most of this work, uh, which is great. This is where she was shooting that nail gun right in here to Put this rim joist on the outside here so so again this all these posts are lag bolted in with six inch lag bolts through the post and through two two by tens thick so that should be very very sturdy okay so since this middle section here between these two posts is what i built to make it removable so I can move furniture up and down. Um, I cut the drywall uh, three inches short on top and the bottom so I can get my screw gun in to the bottom and top to unscrew the sides from the post there. So I got these blocks I just cut at three inches that I'll just set here so I can set my drywall on it. Just as temporary spacers. So now you can see I've got a little bit of a gap here where I'll be able to get in here and unscrew that. And then the baseboard will cover the bottom. The baseboards are three and a half inches tall, so that should cover the bottom. And on the top, I'll also put a piece of trim underneath the cap here to hide that. And then on these seams here, 
I won't screw it into the post. I'll screw this all into the actual wall that's removable, but not into the post part. And then um, I'll put a piece of trim down across, down these seams here to hide the seam, kind of to go with this whole post and beam look um, and feel. All right, so now I just got the cap to put on. Let's see if I can get this thing up here. By myself. It's oh, beautiful. Look at it. So even though I made this section modular where I could pull this out, I'm keeping the cap a full piece, 11 feet or so, and I'll just unscrew it, take it off, and then pull this piece out to move furniture. And that's because this, as stable as this wall is without it, having this full piece up here makes it look better for one, but then secondary, it will also tie all three of these pieces together uh, and provide more support and strength to that. So I have the piece of trim. This is the removable piece right here of the wall. Um, so that way I can get in here with a screw to unscrew that and this whole piece can come out. Uh, but I've got my trim to hide it like so, but I don't want it to fall in like this. So I'm just putting some drywall backer just to kind of set in there as, as so. I only really need to get to the sides. So I'm gonna lift this up here screw this in and now that gives me a kind of a spacer to get it the same plane as the actual wall here so now this won't fall through So now that I've got this whole joist covered with this to make it look like a nice big beam here, I'm going to frame it out with a one by four underneath. So these one by fours I bought, they're just furring strips, cheap pine rough furring strips. Uh, I think they're about a buck 50 a piece. They're four inches uh, by one uh, and eight feet long. For a buck 50 a piece, you can't beat that. And yeah, they're kind of, you know, a bad shape because um, they're just meant for, you know, furring out a wall. Um, but for my purpose here, I want this to be kind of a rustic barn look anyway. So when I picked out these pieces of wood, 
I just made sure they weren't like cracked all the way down or missing big chunks. So I still picked out, you know, ones that were kind of naughty and uh, had some character to them and just made sure they weren't too rough. I also uh, picked up this Cabot Australian teak oil. I love this stuff. I mean, it's really an outdoor stain, but this is like a, a mimic outdoor fence gonna be inside. And then I don't have to varnish or anything. It gives it a nice uh, shine also uh, without having to varnish it. So for this purpose, it's perfect. It might cost a little bit more, but in the end, I'm just doing one coat. So I'm not having to put a coat of varnish over the top, which would cost more at that point. Now I'm putting up the rails, the four-board fence, the faux four-board fence. And I've measured up three inches and a quarter from the top of here for my first board. Then I'll use spacers going up six inches per space. Okay, so now I got my second board here and I've, I've got my trusty block. I've cut at six inches to give me the right spacing. Let's set that on there and there. Now I'm just gonna put one in the middle. Now I don't have to use the level on this one because I could just use my spacer. I just use the level on the, the bottom board. So the bottom board's level, then I just use my spacer on the top board. That should be right, yep, except for a little bow in the board. Now I'm just throwing in one thin nail into this here because when I do have to remove this wall, which is gonna be very, very rare to move furniture, I can just pop these boards off and just re-nail them back up again. So it's just one finished nail in. Good enough, that'll hold it. Two rows done. Two more to go. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of the Barn Dominium build or everything else that's going on at this ranch, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, keep living the dream.